Welcome to this video on working with the process and timeline interactions in Articulate Rise. So a couple more useful interaction blocks you can put into your courses to make your content more engaging. It's already pre-designed, so you can just add your content in there and the functionality works really nicely. So just like any other time you're adding a block into a course, you're going to click on the plus sign and the block library will pop up on the left hand side. And you want to go into the interactive section there. And when you do, if you scroll down a little bit, what you'll see is the process one is there. And a little bit further down, you've got a timeline one. Now, I kind of use these interchangeably because they're very similar if I'm going to step out of process or something like that. But it just allows me to make it look and feel a little bit different. So that's why I've added them to the same video that I'm recording here. So let me add a process one in. And I'm also going to add a timeline one so you can see what these look like. So let me come out of there and let's have a quick look. So you can see the process one is here. It's already preset up with some content in there just so I can have a look what's going on. There is a start button or there are arrows across where you can see you can just step people through a process. You've got text there, you've got images, you can even add videos in there for each part of the process and you can obviously add more steps if you need to but all the functionality is nicely built in there with the timeline one again is very similar other than the fact that you're scrolling down now there's no images in that one there's only two parts but actually you can add images you can add videos you can add your media in there and you can step someone through a process while they are going down the timeline so i actually use both of these interactions for process walkthroughs and they're really, really nice. So just like any other blocks on the right hand side, you've always got your move up and down, you copy and you delete. And on the left, you've got your edit content, you've got your styling and you have your format. So let's just have a quick look at these options for the two different ones and then we'll look at how you go in and edit your content. So let's look at style first very similar to any other sort of block you've got your colors and the images if you want to select one of those and in the format one for this one you've got your block padding so how much space you want above and below you've got your step label and your zoom image so if you've got any images in there your users can go in and click and zoom into those images if i go to the timeline one style again going to be very very similar to any of the other block templates and uh, blocks sorry and the format one for this one is just a bit of padding so let's have a look at adding in some content and then you can go ahead and play around with these so if you click on the process one you'll see your steps on the left hand side you'll see right at the bottom you can add a step and you can easily click and hold and drag them around to reorder them and obviously you can click on the bin to get rid of any of them. But you'll start with an introduction, you'll start with, and sorry, you'll end with a summary, which means you've got a nice start and an end point, and then you're just going to add extra steps in as you're going down. And then you can just go in and add in a title. I like to put the overall into the, into the introduction one there. I've got the overall process title. I've got information about what I'm going to do. I might even have a step in this part, so I might even have some media. You can obviously add audio as well, and then you just drop into each of your steps. So add in a nice, really useful title so they know what they're going to do next. Maybe they're going to enter the name and the address, and then they're going to go in and enter the date of birth, and you want to step out a process in a similar way, so you can go in and do that. Whenever you've got any media in there, you're going to look at your alignment options, and just keep going down and making changes to that. And when you've done everything you need to do, closes in the top right hand corner and that will automatically then, if I just scroll back up, will have updated that um, process interaction. Very similar with the timeline one, if you click on the pencil, you can see I have the same order option down the left hand side and I can just add an event. If you don't want dates on, you can just take that off, you can just delete it and it won't be there. It may, it may look like there's a little bit of a space there, but there'll be nothing that just says event, which is quite useful. And then you can just put your title. I can spell that. And obviously text, formatting your text, using your bowls, things like that, adding your media in, aligning your media, 
and just adding all of that as you're going down. And these are two really useful ways there. You can see that dates just disappeared from the top. So that's what I sometimes do if I'm using timeline for a process. I'll just get rid of anything in that top box and then I can use it really nicely for a process flow as well. So it doesn't always have to look a little bit like this because sometimes depending on how zoomed someone is on their screen or how big a screen they've got, when they're using this, it can just get a bit can just go a bit up and down especially if the images are not the same size or the amount of text is different it can just feel a little bit clunky so sometimes especially if users are used to scrolling down and looking at web pages and having that continuous sort of flow then sometimes the timeline interaction is really useful for process step-by-step -step flows and things like that so another two interaction options there you can use to add extra engagement into your courses, please don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.